turn in the Word of God to the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 4. 2 Timothy, chapter 4. loved ones gone on, we know there's going to be a great reunion day. Yeah. That's going to be a good day. Nice. I'm nice. preaching this morning on a, a beautiful ending. Right. And I'll tell you what, that's going to be a beautiful ending yeah. when the Lord Jesus splits the eastern sky and catches the saints of God together right. with their loved ones in the air. That's going to be a glorious Glorious, beautiful time. Amen. 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 Right now we may have to endure some heartaches and some grief and kind of ask God's Spirit to put some salve over those empty holes in our hearts until we get there. But the brighter day is coming. Right. The, the union is going to happen. And uh, I think there's the Bible says precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saint. Right. It's precious to God. Amen. That's really when our faith becomes a reality. Mm -hmm. That's what our whole Christian life is for. We don't we should not want to shun away from that death experience or uh, asking Jesus to hold back his coming because we're all going to be changed in a moment, the twinkling of an eye. Uh, either at the last trump, you'll leave this world in one of two ways. The upper taker or the undertaker. Right. And I'm not looking forward to the undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> Although he will be the last man that will ever let you down. Right. <laughs> man, yeah. I'm looking for the upper taker to come. Right. And just take us all up together. Uh, and you know it could be before this sermon's finished. Right, amen. Well, wouldn't that be awesome? Yes, sir. I can just imagine the fun and the look on Jesus' face if he were to choose to do that while I'm still preaching. Right. <laughs> amen. That would be awesome. Yeah. There's a question that you need to answer today. Only you can answer it. What's the end of your story going to look like? What's your story ending going to be? Amen. I, I like a beautiful ending. Amen? Amen. And for those of we who are saved, it'll be a beautiful ending. But stand with me if you would, please. And let's read what the Apostle Paul is ready to check out. And let's begin reading in verse 6. Paul says, For I am ready, I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only but unto all them also that love his appearing. Amen. Then Paul said, do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. Where I am, there I want you to be. That's exactly what Jesus wants too. Where I am, there you will be also. He's gone to prepare that place. He's got that time already set. We're all going to face the ending. But how is the story going to end? It's not the beginning that counts. It's the end. Okay? Let's pray and I'll speak as God has given me by His Spirit to speak. Father, thank You for the privilege to preach. 
I pray you would give me clarity of thought and mind and heart and may the, the words of God be heard and not mine. Lord, I'm only an instrument of love in the hand of God, a, a voice, a mouthpiece for you because you, your word is written, but it needs to be spoken so hearers can hear what the Spirit of God has to say. And certainly we know that he's present with us now. He's present with me. He's present in this room to every listener. I pray, dear God, that the Spirit of God would have power to speak to our hearts and our lives and change them as necessary and have your will and accomplish whatever you will with this message. And I'll give you praise, honor, and glory for it's in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please be seated. I very seldom watch movies, but my son Tim challenged me once and said, oh, Dad, this looks pretty interesting. Let's watch this movie. And normally when I'm watching a movie, I won't even sit through the whole movie. You know, I'll just disappear someplace, you know. But I sat through this whole movie and we watched it all, one by one, how these people, the people died. And the, the stars of the movie, there were two of them left. And they were in dire condition because the whole world had been destroyed. And these two men, we saw them walking out and think, what kind of an ending is this going to be? And the, the only two heroes and the two last people on the planet walked to the middle of this de desert and fell over dead. <laughs> Is that right? What kind of an ending? That's probably why I don't sit through movies. <laughs> the ending's important, eh, man? Two people meet and fall in love. A man. He looks at, and, and here's the phrase that's that's a. It's a phrase that goes over weddings, but there's there's no there's no truth about it, but it says, live happily ever after. <laughs> Man, no times of sorrow, are you kidding me? You can be so much in love, and you can have a lot of happiness, but it's not all happy forever, amen? There's a, there's a few rocky places for everybody, amen? If you can experience have a way of escaping those rocky places, please share with somebody. <laughs> but we all come out in, in the end. Judy and I will be married 59 years, May, oh May, that's my birthday, June, June of this year. Okay? I'm ready. something to have birthdays. I heard the story this couple, you know, they were they loved their kids, you know, and they were standing before a divorce judge and the judge said, how old are you? He says, I'm 99. <laughs> said to us, how old are you? I, I, I'm 98. He said, would you please tell me at 99 and 98 years old, you're now standing before a a divorce judge? How can that be? And they said, we had to wait till all of our kids died. <laughs> <laughs> so everything is not hunky-dory all the time. <laughs> but you need to be thinking about the ending of your life, and you understand you can laugh now, but you know, I remember a time when some of you were crying, amen? Yeah. But the choices and the, the decisions we make in life right from the time we're, we're taught and trained to grow up to make our own path and hopefully we'll follow God and follow His path. But we, uh, we uh, there's so much self-destruction going on in our world. People on self-destruction courses. Our choices are so important especially along those roads of life. Now, when we're saved, God's got a purpose and a calling and a plan 
for every one of our lives. We, we have to be on that path, listening to the Spirit of God to make all these choices to do the right things at the right points in time, at, at, at take the right road, and, and ask the Spirit of God in wisdom to keep us in God's path. And I will tell you, you'll have a good ending if you're in God's path. Right. If you're not in God's path, you're not going to have a right ending. Yeah. So I just want us to think about a beautiful ending. Yeah. Because so many people waste their life away. Die to perish, many of them. And nobody in the whole world they ever knew will ever remember they ever existed. If you end up in heaven and they end up in hell. Right. The ending of the story. I want a beautiful ending for you. I want a beautiful ending for me. And we can have that in the Lord Jesus. So how does your story end? Time is going to be up to serve God. For many people, time is up to choose salvation. Nobody intends to die lost without God, but procrastination and putting it off till later is the devil's tool right. to have a destructive ending Amen. for life. I like that little icon that Matt put up there, that sea of people being swept up, and you'll see the hands of Jesus are there. One by one, taking the crowd. He's going to call us up. You know, I've often thought, we, we've had some days that's been pretty close to a perfect day. But I don't, I don't think there's ever really been a perfect day. You say, well, preacher, when will the perfect day come? The perfect day will come when Jesus Christ comes back. Right. Yeah. That's Amen. the perfect day. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Because all... Right. Everything that happened, it won't matter. Yeah. So we worry about so much today. What's going to happen? We And mostly, have you ever noticed, you can say amen or raise your hand on How many of you wonder, remember all the devastation of something you worried about and it never happened? Amen. <laughs> all that wasted worry. Amen? We have to live by faith and trust the Lord. Well, let me preach a little bit now that I'm warmed up. <laughs> Paul said, I am now ready to be offered. That means I'm, I'm, I'm checking out. I'm ready. You need to be ready to be offered. Right. And then he said, the time of my departure is at hand. Listen, there's going to be a time. That this pulpit will not have Ron Dobbs in it. I see across this room, I see chairs that would have been filled. Yeah. And if somebody else hadn't filled them, they would have been vacant. Right. Because so many people we loved have right. gone home to be with the Lord. Yeah. yeah. I miss that shouting little grover over there. Amen. He was my favorite cheerleader. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite cheerleader was not a girl with a pom pom. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite cheerleader was, well, bless God! Yeah. Come from that corner. Yeah. That get up and say, yeah, look out! <laughs> yeah. Hands raised. Doing the right thing, being an encourager. But we need more of that. We need encouraged. Right. Everyone needs to be encouraged. I'm ready to be offered. And the day of my departure is at hand. And here's what I said. I have finished my course. You, you, did you know Paul was on a course? Right. It was a whole different one than it was when he was in sin. Amen. Because he slaughtered Christians. Right. When God saved him, he was on the Damascus Road headed to persecute some more Christians 
when God knocked him off of his feet, blinded his eyes. And those blinded eyes, when they were blinded, were open to the Spirit of God. He said, Lord, what would you have me to do? And if anybody can charge you or encourage you not to give up with hard times, it was the life of the Apostle Paul and all he went through. I'll talk just a little in a few moments about that. But he said, I have finished my course. And I have kept the faith. Right. Oh, Jesus, before he left, said, Oh, when the Son of Man comes back, will he find faith on the earth? And I find Christians that's stumbling, that's faltering, that's throwing up their hands, that's giving up. That lets the pressures of life swallow up their spiritual life and their happiness, making the life that they have until the end finally does come more miserable than ever. And you know what? Misery loves company. And if you want to be miserable, you just hang around a griping, miserable person. Right. Amen? Right. You want to be happy, you're going to hang with upbeats. <laughs> Amen? You're going to try to, uh, to, to curb that. We cannot afford to waste our life away. And when our flesh and all of our problems uh, are demonstrated, that's the most important thing about our countenance and about our personality. And the world sees it. They, they need to see Christ. They need to see a smile on our face when hard times come. They need to see faith increased like a rock, a rock of Gibraltar that will never crumble. Right. Paul said, I've kept the faith. Amen. I'm now ready. The time of my departure is at hand. I've fought a good fight. Boy, a long time ago, a lot of Christians stopped fighting. Yeah. Yeah. They stopped speaking up. They dropped their stands for God. They've let their voices become silent. And you want to know why the world and all of these minority groups are getting their way and their privileges and ours is disappearing? Because we just keep silent and take anything that comes along and they just voice their opinion in such, in such perplexities and, and, and that, that they get the attention. I think it was Dr. John Hamlin said one time, you know what? The squeaky wheels the one that gets the oil. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. I think it's time we Christians got oil on our squeaky wheels. Boldness to speak up and stand for God. We'll talk a little about that in just a few moments. And then he says, after these three things, he says, henceforth. Now, when you see a therefore in the Bible, you need to look and see what it's there for. That's right. <laughs> henceforth, because of these three things. Because I fought a good fight. Because I finished my course. Because I've kept the faith. Henceforth. There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. You're not going to get the crown of righteousness if you've not fought a good fight, if you've not finished the course, if you've not kept the faith. Henceforth, because of these three things. Hey, please take note. These three things you need to do. You need to have a good fight for God. Amen? Don't lay down and roll over and let the devil whip you up one side and down the other. Then you lay there and beat yourself up. Amen. Amen? We can't afford to beat ourselves up. When Christians fail God, I want you to know the sin is already under the blood. You need to confess it and not waste your time or God's time and raise up and walk the new life and 
forsake the, the and take learning from what's happened. Amen. Amen. And the, right. the, mo the most awesome thing that most secular counselors even forget to tell people is people have a hard time forgiving themselves. Right. I can't believe I did this. How many of you can just say amen? So I amen. Right amen. There. The things in my life, I just can't believe that that was me that did it. Nor it wasn't the God you that did it. It was the old flesh sheep lead you that you let make the mistake to change that course of your life. That's why choices are important. Every, every, with every choice, there is a ramification of that choice. There's consequences to every choice. There's good or bad. There's righteousness or unrighteousness. There is good deeds or bad deeds. Right <coughs> or wrong in our choices. So when we're going to come to the end of the road, there are no more do-overs. Or you can say, well, I wish I'd have known back then. I would have done something different. That's why you're getting this sermon now. So you'll know from now on out, you can change the ending that perhaps will happen with you. I want a beautiful ending. A happy ending. Amen? And that's the kind that you need to experience. So... There's a crown of righteousness laid up for me that the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me. Jesus himself is going to come by. And my rewards is with me to give to every man according to his work. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. He's got the rewards with him. And then he says, not to me only. So he said, well, Paul was a great apostle and, and with what all the great writings he did and all of the uh, missionary journeys and the churches he started and all that he went through for God and he's fought a good fight and kept the, finished his course and kept the faith and boy, what an example to walk and to live by. Amen. But hey, he's not getting that because he's somebody special. Right. Not to me only. Aren't you glad he included yeah. you? <laughs> right. But to all those who love his appearing. Amen. Do you love the appearing of Jesus? Amen. Can you say from your heart, come right now, Lord Jesus. Amen. There's nothing in my life I would be ashamed of if you come back and found me just the way I am. Well, if we knew he was coming before I got done preaching, I wouldn't even have to give an altar call. We'd all be here praying. Right. He could come back. We're going to face him just the way we are. And not he notices. Uh, some people just want him to come back to get out of trouble. <laughs> a new pastor that had a large in a bond debt with his church. And he was really one particular day when the offerings were low, he was I was a young deacon and he was kind of distraught. Now, what's the matter, preacher? I just wish the Lord would come back. I'm going to get some inspiration right here. <laughs> That's great. I said, why do you want him to come back? He said, I wouldn't have to pay this mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but that's a wrong right. reason to want the Lord to come back. Right. I know it will be a blessing, amen. Right. But I want to tell you, we need to love his appearing because we want to see him. All right. We want our lives to be ready. We want our rewards and our the, the accomplishments and the purpose He's called our entire life to. A lifetime of serving God culminating in well done yes. my good and faithful servant. 
been faithful over a few things. Now I'm going to make you ruler over many. <laughs> yeah, we will rule angels in the worlds to come. We will rule nations in the world to come. The kings of the earth. I, I may be looking at some kings right now. Right? right? right. Ruling over, over that new heaven part. Or over that new earth part. To take your rulership of, uh, uh, of the kingdom. And bring all the praise up into the city of God. Man, God's got things prepared for us in our ending. We had no slight idea. When the hoppers were here, you know, they came up on this stage and the first thing they sang, if we could get a little glimpse of what's up there, we would want to be down here. How many remember that? Only a glimpse. There's going to be a good ending. We need to be aware of everything that we've gone through and give God praise for it because, you know, Paul understood that. Let's look what Paul understood. Now, before he talked about his own ending, he gave some instruction here to Timothy because he knew what Timothy was going to be going through. In chapter 4, the early verses, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Now this is the charge called Jesus is coming. The king is coming. Right. The righteous judge is coming. He's already called some home. But until he comes... He's got some servants that need to do some things. Amen. Preach the word. Amen. That's the most failed commission and command in our world today. Is the word of God is not being preached. Be instant in season. And out of season. Right. You know, some of us don't want to serve unless it's in season. Right. Don't call on me to do something out of season. Hey, God may need you to do most of the stuff He, he wants you to do won't be in season. Right. A lot of people say, well, when I've pastored so many years, people come. Well, we preach, we need workers. Well, preacher, give me a job in the church, something that's according to my ability that I know I can do. Well, I appreciate them wanting to do a good job of whatever it is. Amen? And no job is too little or too too big for, for the house of God. But sometimes, you know, I have told people before, why don't you take one of these jobs that's not according to your ability and let God give you the ability, then you'll know it came from God. Instead of your talent to do it. <coughs> Hello? Right. <coughs> Did you know God can make you to do things you never dreamed you could do? Yeah. Do you know that God told you I could do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me that there's nothing you can't do that God has called you to do? He would never call you to do a task. He didn't give you. And besides, it's Him that performs it anyway. He that's begun a good work in you will perform it. Oh, you thought you had to perform it, right? I have to be able to direct it right. I have to be able to... Uh, no. You, you, what, what we do as singers all the time, you never know when you're going to have a Tarzan moment. Amen. Right. <laughs> it's embarrassing. And when you've got a smooth, beautiful boy, I was like, oh, oh, oh. Right in the of <laughs> Well, boy. <laughs> and that one song we did today, and we hadn't sung for two years. Now, I don't know if my voice will do that. I said, hey, just pray and trust God. You're going to do fine. Hey, how about Tim Solo this morning? Amen. <laughs> In 
pain or physical problems or whatever. I've known what this is. I, I, I've gone when I, when I was so sick I didn't think I could get a note out. Absolutely one time when we had an appointment, Judy had laryngitis at the, at, 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 at the old church that was right there where Lowe's is. How many remember the old building? Central Baptist. Yeah. And uh, they had a beautiful, beautiful PA system. And that Sunday morning, Judy had laryngitis. She couldn't get a squeak out. Come on. She got up there, and those electro voices, mics, just sucked the beauty right out of her throat, and she did great. You have to lean upon Jesus. He can give you a voice. Well, if you get steeped in pride, he can let a Tarzan note come out anytime he wants. Right. <laughs> Which is the singer's worst nightmare. <laughs> Amen? You've got to trust him. You've got to have faith. You've got to let God perform it. Right. <coughs> He's the one that performs it all. Paul said, He's coming back to judge the kingdoms, to preach the word. <coughs> Be ready at all time in season that reprove. That's to the preachers and the speakers. That's to Christians also to reprove people, other Christians, that's trying to justify wrong living and trying to get somebody to agree with them. I learned most of my pastoral counseling over the years has been where people didn't really want me to tell them what they should be doing from the Word of God. They just wanted the preacher to agree with their orneries. Right. <laughs> That's why they learned not to come to me. They knew what they was going to get. Yeah. If you're going to get counseling, it's going to be right counseling, godly counsel. Right. It's going to be from the pages of the Word of God. That's the only thing that will change your life. Rebuke and then exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And there it is again. Without doctrine, you don't have nothing. Right, absolutely. Without doctrine, you've got compromise. Amen. Without doctrine, you've got confusion. Amen. You have to have the right doctrine. Right. How can we eliminate God's doctrine? Any of it. Right. It all has to be preached. Amen. Well, I don't like that separation from the world. Or I don't like uh, this or that. And, hey, it has to be preached. It all has to be preached. Right. All the counsel of God has to be preached so people will know what's right. Because you can't rebuke or reprove with that. And you can't even exhort without rebuking and, and reproving. Because everybody has the opinion that they're right about everything and they're not wrong about nothing. So when the Word of God conflicts with it, guess who's right? God's right and you're wrong. Amen. So if we're wrong, we need to admit it. We need to understand it. We need to build it upon the truth of this doctrines of the Word of God. With long suffering. And not with pride, but with humility. For the, then Paul said, you need this because, Timothy, there's going to come a time when they will not endure sound doctrine. That's right. Because so many people have taught the wrong ways and so many people have believed the wrong ways and it's hard to say I was wrong, I was deceived. We have to take what's true. This portion of scripture, I preached a message some time ago on the triple A's of our day. Yeah, triple A's high too, amen. <laughs> Getting higher and higher. But the triple A's of our days is, first of all, 
appetites. People's appetites in our world are for worldly, sinful, lustful things. That's the appetite of the world. Right. And then the apathy. The apathy is that Christians sit around that won't speak up, that won't serve the Lord, that just takes whatever comes. It's apathy. They're silent. They're lazy. They're not supporting. They're fearful. They're selfish. They don't want the confrontations of standing for what's right. That's apathy. And then the apostasy is the big thing. The great falling away from the words of God and the preaching of the book. That's the apostasy. That's the lying prophets. That's the lying children. Right. That's the false prophets that deceive many. Okay, I want to talk just a few moments on the real ending of your life will become a reality. It's going to become real someday. You right. get no notes for and invitations and bad news that someone's passed away, you never thought some of the people that passed away you'd ever be standing there. But you were. And always it's going to be somebody else. Can I tell you that one day the sirens that's coming is going to be coming for your driveway. That's right. It's not going to be a fiction, a fear, if you know God. The time is coming. It is appointed unto man once to die after this, the judgment right. of God. Paul said, I finished my course. I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. Henceforth, now there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. And not to me only, but all those of love is appearing. And there's five, there's four other crowns you could win. The soul winner's crown, the crown of rejoicing, the crown of faithfulness, of faithfully serving God, which is, our, which is uh, the, the theme of our whole year is faithfulness, being found faithful. So when it comes to realizing so many people say, if I knew then what I know now, I would make some changes. I would have done things different. You can't go back and change what's already been. But let me tell you something. You've got a great chance to change from right now to change the ending of your story. Right. How many rewards are you going to have? How many of those five crowns are you going to have? When you stand before God, will you be embarrassed? Will you do then, when you stand before Him then, will you wish you had done more? I think all of us will wish we had done more. Right. Well, you heard that in the sermon right now. Amen. You've heard it before. Why face the end of your life and let that slip from here until then. Amen? If you wish you'd have done more, here's the answer. Two words. Do more. Amen? <laughs> Amen? Right. Amen. You want to do more? Do more. You want to be greater? Be greater. Right. You want to increase your strength? Be strengthened in the Spirit of God. <clears throat> All these promises and miracles of God working in your life are not just vain promises. Right. They are a reality in your life now if you'll take them and claim them and apply them. Yes, sir. Amen. You can change the ending. The work 
books that went on. Peter said they're already reserved in heaven, reserved in your name. I wish I how many thousands of times I've watched God come down on the deathbed or on the life of a, a, a unbeliever and save them. See the happiness and the joy that swept their face. I, I love you know what I loved about soul winning? After they say, thank you, Lord, for saving me, I like to look right in the face and see the expression change. That's a beautiful thing to see a soul come to Jesus. Right. Yeah. Nothing is more beautiful than that. Nothing is worth more than to know that you were the very act your voice and your hands and your heart and with your with you being an instrument of love in God's hand, that you were the instrument of love to pull somebody out of the fires of hell. Right. Oh, you long for that as a soul winner. And I'm going to tell you a sad ending. It's not going to take me very long. But the ending is very, very sad. It's so sad to know that there existed right. a whole lifetime of love and family all erased away because they were separated for eternity. David and I were in the Maslin Baptist Temple in a so winning conference. We're going out and knock on some doors. That church is a great door knocking church. But let me tell you something. Sometimes you can knock on the door over and over and over and you can do more harm than you do good. Right. Right on the very first street. Uh, they didn't give David and I an assigned place to go. So we're just going to take the first street by the church. So we took the street about two, three doors down, knocked on the door, family came to the door, I forget, the teenager or something, and uh, he introduced them and said, we'd like to just take a few minutes to share the gospel. She said, oh, my dad's sick. He's real sick. And, and look, maybe this is God. Let us, let us come in and talk to him. Oh, no, he wouldn't want you to talk to him. Because he had already Week after week after week after week, year after year, every single visitation, they were knocking on that guy's door, talking to him about the Lord. He got so bitter. Yeah. But some of the family, he was almost dying at the point of death. And one of them that really did not want to see him die lost came to the door and said, please come in. No, no, he, he don't want it. No, please come in. He, please come in and talk to him. And David and I walked in the room and we got met with cursing. We tried to witness to him. He said, get out of my house. Leave me alone. I want to die and go to hell. So we walked out of his room. Probably before that meeting was finished, his request was granted. That's not a pretty story. And that certainly is not no good in me. Everybody will not heed stubbornness and self-will and and the hatred and all of this stuff builds up over <clears> life. <throat> you wonder down through life before he got in that shape, what kind of a life, what kind of a joys he had. Oh, that's not going to mean anything. Right. It's a wrong ending. It's a bad ending. Quite unlike that little man who had a Methodist mom and dad that sought for the way of God on his deathbed 
that had never been religious and sweet, that had never known the Lord. And me and my brother Moreland went in and led him to Jesus. His name was Mr. Benson. And when Jesus came in and the peace came in, tears began to flow down his eyes. He began to clap those little bony hands and he said, Sweet Jesus. Amen. Sweet Jesus. I held his funeral about two days later. <clears throat> Only the wife and I and his landlord was at the funeral. He didn't die alone. He had Jesus. Amen. That's a good ending. I don't know about you, but I hate things that don't have a good ending. Amen. Amen. And especially when it comes to you, I want a good ending for you. Amen. I want a good ending for me. Right. But it's up to us to make that changes to make it good, <laughs> to make it better, to make it great. Because we're going to go into the presence of our Savior. We want to say with the Apostle Paul, I'm now ready. I'm right now, now ready to be offered. I have finished my course. I've kept the faith. I've fought the good fight. My ending is here. That the Lord Himself. Hey, St. Peter's not going to greet you, Jesus is. Amen. St. Peter's not going to give you your rewards, Jesus says. I come with your rewards in my hand to give to you as you worked. And the proof is already in the records. I will be preaching a message soon entitled, The Proof is in the Pudding. <laughs> Amen? My little mother-in-law <coughs> made some banana pudding. It was awesome. Praise the Lord. Except it tasted a little bit funny. And when we went to investigate, when we went to investigate, she had everything in that banana pudding except bananas. <laughs> <laughs> and the proof is in the pudding. Amen? <laughs> When your story ends, the proof yeah. is in the pudding. Right. Amen? Let's stand.